So hello everybody, Convert with Most 11.2 is out and it's only a minor number change but with a lot of new features, mainly for the core KMP format as well as Decent Sampler but also much more other goodies which you have been wishing for. And the first thing to look into is that if you used Convertive Moss frequently, it was a bit tedious to select your source and your destination folder. So this is now much easier since the application remembers the last 20 selected folders you had in here as well as the output folder. And also if you select here a different selection and then click on select, it will start from that folder you selected here. So it's much easier to navigate and quicker to find your source and destination folder. Also, there were some issues with AIFF files for loading them, which was due to the handling in the Java Sound API. So I implemented now my own code to load AIFF files. So these should now all work fine. So let's start with the biggest topic, the Cork KMP format, which is supported in all their nowadays and also older days workstations, starting with the Cork Trinity, I think if I remember correctly. And I have here the Cork M3 for testing. It turns out that the device can actually not play back real stereo files, even if they're KSF files, so the files which store the actual samples, can store stereo files, the playback is somehow weak and broken. And strangely, I did not notice that so far, which the main indicator was that they also were much more silent because the stereo file was played back as a mono file and then you had cancellation. But I did now the proper implementation, which is that you need to split the left stereo information into a separate KMP file and the data for the right channel of the sample needs to be in a separate KMP file. And they are automatically identified by the workstation by having different names, one ending with dash L and one ending with dash R inside of the KMP file. And yeah, let's basically have a look at that. This makes it clearer. I had now to deal with all the different options you can have as an input. You can have pure mono, you can have pure stereo, but you can also have some mixed input data, which means you have mono and stereo files files combined into source multi-samples and you can have them mixed in groups. So one group contains mono, one group contains stereo files and there are also split stereo files which means already the left and the right channel are in separate files. So that's all the cases I had to deal with and now from these input formats we create proper two KMP files. So let's check that out. So this is the folder so we can convert all of them. And this gives you now also the information, what source sample is found. So it's also kind of nice for debugging. So this is mixed format. As you see, it's detected also as a mixed format. And you see it creates two files. And what it also creates now, which was not the case before, it creates also a KSC file. KSC file is a simple text file. We can have a look at that in a second, which simply lists the KMP files which belong together into one group. So you can load both of them in one go by loading the KSC file. So some are already created. So let's have a look at that what is already there. So for example, if I have a look here, you see all the sample files, the separate ones. You have the left channel and the right channel, and you have these KSC files, which as I said, is a simple text file. And there you see the list of the two files, so you can load them in one go. And there are also some fixes I did on the way. For example, the sample rate limit was fixed to 44.1 kilohertz, which was not correct. Actually, they can play back up to 48 kilohertz, so this is corrected. Then I ensure the creation of a unique folder name, so you will not longer have any trouble with duplicated KMP files, which could not be created then. And there was also a real heavy issue in there, which means that that the zones need to be ordered, increasing in their number of their higher key range. If that is not the case, the whole workstation crashes, which took me a while to figure out what is actually the problem. So this is also fixed if you had that issue in the past and also some minor fixes.
fixes are included as well. But there is more. There are also some options now here. So the first one is write group KMPs, which was the default in the previous version, which means if you have more than one group in the source material, you can now decide to write individual KMPs for them as well. I thought quite some time about this. This makes only sense if you have, for example, source material which has layer switches. So for these input materials, it makes sense to have them in separate KMPs and then map them accordingly into a program in the workstation. Then there is also source material which has very soft and low volume samples. So there are two options to work against it. One is an option that you can boost everything by 12 dB which is already quite a lot. And the second option is that you can crank the volume setting of all samples up to 99, which might not be correct in all the ways, but this ensures that you make them as loud as possible and you can also enable both. <laughs> then you can ensure you have really the absolute maximum volume on the device. But normally you should have left them off. This is only for working around the problem of low volume samples. Finally, let's have a look at it. So here we are, my Korg M3, good old Korg M3 piano, but we want to check out the sample. So let's go here to media and I copied everything here on my USB stick, which I inserted. So what we saw in the output folder is now on the stick and I put everything in this channels folder and let's open that up. So here you see the different output and let's maybe load this first choir sound here open it up and here you see now the same file so the left and right kmp file so let's load up the ksc file here you have the option to clear the whole memory which is doesn't matter because it's empty currently or you can append it as well so you can load multiple ksc files as well let's go forward with that this takes quite a while so it's yeah old machinery here so it will load the individual ksf files and now it loads the right channel. So, and we're done. And I prepared here a little, let's go here, prepared here a little patch already. It's basically an initialized patch, just with a different name. And there you can go on a second page. And on the second page, you have the option to select your sample you want to play back. And this confused me also quite a bit, but now I understand it, but it's really strange. It shows you two different RAM positions, which are actually the same, but nevertheless, one is called M. Here we are. One is called M and M means mono and S means stereo. It's basically the same memory, but uh, it shows you here in S only the ones which got identified as stereo samples, but you will also find these samples into the M. So if you look here, we have here the choir left and right, but this will now sound only mono. Let's crank it up. So you need to be careful that you do not only select M, you need to select the S version. And in that case, it will also automatically load the R, so the right side. And now it will sound nicely stereo. So much for the core KMP support. The next big thing is changes for the decent sampler support. So let's switch here to decent sampler and you will see even more options here for decent sampler. And the new thing is that you can now also create this bundle format. What that means in a second, the next big thing is that you can also now combine several multi-samples into one library or bundle. I introduced this feature so far only for the Yamaha YSFC. There you already have this option to combine everything into one library. And this is now the second format, which also gets this support. Yeah, let's start with creating a library. So preset is actually the same. If you have enabled this, this will only make sense if you have selected library 
or bundle. So let's go here with library first. And now everything you support as an input format, let's just maybe let's go with my five example files here. Let's take them as an input here. These will all be combined into one library. So also again, take care that it's not getting too big or maybe this library will somehow <laughs> explode. And here you have also the option to give this a name. So let's maybe let's go. There are some choirs here, choir sounds, and let's create it. And it's all done. And let's have a look at the result. So here's also the stuff from the previous conversion from the cork. Let's delete that. So here's the library which got created. And this is simply a zipped file. Let's open that. And here you see we have here folder choirs. And here you have the different presets. Let's create now an instance of decent sampler. And if I drag and drop now this library onto Decent Sampler, it will ask you now if you want to install this preset library onto your thingy here. And yes, we want to do that. And now you can choose a preset. So it lists nicely the presets in the in the library, and then you can play them as well. It's a bit soft, maybe crazy. Okay, so this is also working. So what is now the difference to this bundle format? Let's switch over again to here. So this bundle format is basically the same as the library format, but it's not compressed. Yeah, let's maybe create it, then it will be easier to understand. Let's do the same conversion here and we are done. And let's have a look again at the output. So you see here, there is now a folder created choirs.ds bundle, which is a name. And then it contains basically the same as in the library we looked at before. With one difference, there is also an info file, which contains nothing but the name choirs. So, okay, that's the difference because it can maybe not detect it from the zipped file name. Basically, it's the same as in library. But what happens now if we drag and drop that one onto Decent Sampler? It's not asking us to install it, which we can do manual anyway. And then you can load it as well. Maybe a uh, a matter of taste. If you go here to browse, you see here, this is the installed library we did before. And you could also copy this bundle here, which will then appear in a pretty similar way. It's maybe a matter of taste, which one you prefer. Okay, but if you uncheck that, you will still get the same feature as before. It will then create bundles for each individual input file. Same for library, we get then many libraries for each input file and preset is as before. Next new feature, MPC key groups. You might have noticed that there is a beta firmware with the version number 3.4, and this brings a nice addition that the layer limit for each key group got increased to eight, which was four before. <laughs> now it's eight, so you can squeeze in more layers into one key group than before. It's still a restriction, but nevertheless, eight is quite okay, I think. So looking at the SFZ format, there's now a new option to lock unsupported SFZ opcodes, which confuse people quite a lot. If you get these input error warnings, which are only warnings for your information that some opcodes are simply not used in the conversion process, but some people were thinking there was something wrong with the file. So you need to actively activate now this feature to see those unused opcodes. And if you don't, the output lock looks a little bit cleaner and not so dangerous. SFSet has a feature that you can include other SFSet files. And here's one example for such a thing. If you open the file, you will see there are include files. So for example, if you have specific controls or anything which you don't want to repeat in all the different files you create, you can include these files into a relative directory, which for example is here. And here you find these files to include, and they can also reference other 
SFZ files, so they can also have other includes, which should not create a loop, but this is also detected and prevented. So we are also safe with that. And yeah, let's give this a go with that folder. We have been, let's give that conversion a shot here. And we are with that folder and SFZ input is fine. And let's go also with SFZ. So if you simply want to remove the includes and create full contained SFZ files, you could also simply do SFZ to SFZ and then we'll get one complete file. Let's maybe do that. Yeah, there is one file with an issue here, but the rest is working nicely and coming out as intended. So here we have now the output and you will now see if you open the same file, you would get all the info in one file instead of scattered it over multiple files. So last but not least, good old sound font 2. Several people requested that we have the option to prefix two things. First one is the file name of the source file to have this also prefixed to the output file as well as the program number. So one sound font as a two file can contain multiple instruments which all have a program number and you can now add them as well. Let's check them out. We need to find here input file sf2 yeah let's just go with everything and let's create sfz from that so and as you see if you look now at the output you will get the file name of the source file prefixed as well as a program number and then finally the instrument name so this might help you to get a better understanding what got actually created from the source file. So much for 11.2, the new version of Convert with Moss, lots of new stuff. And yeah, until next time, make some funky music.